My name is Don Hooten, and I'm with the Taylor Hooten Foundation, and we're here today uh, to teach you something about today's version of what we call appearance and performance enhancing drugs. And we'll explain to you shortly why we've added the word appearance uh, to the words performance enhancing drugs. Let me begin by introducing how we got into this. This is my youngest boy, Taylor, after whom the organization is named. Taylor was a baseball player. And at 16 years old, uh, his coach told this six foot three, 185 pound young man that he needed to get bigger in order to improve his chances of making varsity. And I don't infer that the coach meant anything other than that. But what the coach didn't know was when Taylor walked back into the dugout, half of the boys on his baseball team were already actively injecting themselves with anabolic steroids. So Taylor began to do the same thing and seven months later he died. And uh, it's a 3.8 grade average, good Christian boy, active in the, our First Baptist Church, and um, the very last young man that anyone associated with would ever suspect of using anabolic steroids. Well, we were shocked by two things. One, to find out how dangerous these drugs can be, and we'll learn a little bit more about that in a minute, but the most important message I want to leave you with is how big the problem is. And I want to play a very short video here, just runs about three minutes. We'll introduce uh, you to the scope of the problem here in the United States. We'll talk about some of those numbers and the scope of the problem a little bit further into the presentation. But we formed, uh, recognizing the seriousness and the breadth of the problem, we file, uh, filed uh, for uh, application with the IRS and got approval to become a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're very proud to have support of both Major League Baseball and the NFL, as well as a number of other um, entities. Major League Baseball is our primary corporate sponsor, but we're developing a closer and closer relationship with the NFL and are very, very pleased to be participating in this event today. Our mission's about education and it's about kids. Uh, we're not focused on what's going on uh, in the professional sports. I mean, I've got my opinions just like I'm sure you do. We're focused on the millions of kids that are partaking of these drugs. What we're going to talk about today a little bit is touch on several subjects. The general categories, appearance and performance enhancing drugs, and it's substances that are taken to either get bigger and faster and stronger or to look better. We normally talk about human growth hormone. We don't have time to get into that today, so we're going to spend our time on dietary supplements and anabolic steroids. Now, when we talk about dietary supplements, we're getting ready to talk about what many of you might be fearing that I'm going to talk about. It's the stuff that's being sold over the, health, over the counter in the health food stores, the protein shakes, the creatine, and the other stuff our athletes are taking in an effort to get bigger. First statement of fact is these substances are 100% unregulated. What does that mean? That means that there is no one verifying that what's on the label of the container is what's in the container. Uh, you can't look at the list of substances and come to the conclusion that there's nothing on here to be concerned about. When we talk about uh, per, uh, supplements in general, the most popular supplement are our protein shakes, of protein in different forms. So let's begin, uh, and we don't have time to go into a whole dietitian's lecture here. Let's just say that your 200 pound athlete that's in the middle of two a days <coughs> uh, needs about 160 grams of protein a day in order to, uh, to fill his daily needs. And this is just to say that a typical diet, if a kid's eating three square meals a day, they're getting more than their 160 grams of protein a day. What happens to gram number 161, 165, 170? The next time your young men go into the urinal, you can watch it go down the toilet because the body expels any of the excess protein that's taking in. So the first message to most of our young people that very few want to listen to is that they're wasting their money spending $75 on a, on a package of super-duper uh, protein supplements because somebody told them to do it. 
uh, or because everybody else is doing it. Second message is, is this stuff is spiked with performance enhancing drugs. Current numbers are somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the over-the-counter protein shakes, the very ones that your kids have in their lockers right this minute, 25 percent of them roughly, are spiked with real anabolic steroids. I did, uh, was in a meeting in Washington about two months ago, three months ago, and there was a lady sitting across the table, Dr. Patricia Doyster, who is the head of the dietetic <coughs> group for the Department of Defense. She watches <coughs> what's coming in with all our soldiers. She says, Mr. Hooten, we think your number's low. What we're seeing with our soldiers coming in to basic training, which are coming right out of your high schools, is that the number's closer to 50%. If we get a young man that is getting weight gain from a supplement that he picked up at the health food store, and we think it was the protein, then we don't understand what protein does, because protein doesn't cause muscle growth. It's most likely that that young athlete has picked up real, illegal anabolic steroids that are contaminating uh, those, uh, those, uh, those products. This is an eye chart, don't expect you to be able to read it, but this is a list of all of the banned substances, or most of the banned substances that have been found in dietary supplements. Let's look at the categories, stimulants, narcotics, steroids, beta-2 antagonists, and diuretics. We've got zillions of kids across the country that are doping right now, most likely in your athletic program, they have no idea and you have no idea, and they're getting it by virtue of the dietary supplements that they're purchasing. Next category, I wish we could spend more time on that, we just can't, energy drinks. Uh, first note at the top, the American Medical Association is trying to get these products banned for anybody under, I don't know whether it's 18 or 21 years of age. Reason for it, these are very dangerous. It, it begins the entryway into stimulants, uh, legal and illegal stimulants. A typical uh, energy drink uh, has about five times the caffeine level that you get in one cup of coffee. It's very, very heavy duty. but it's not just the caffeine. There are other substances like taurine or guarana that are put into these products to supercharge, turbocharge the caffeine to put an extra kick in there. The most recent numbers we have, uh, haven't found any more recent than this, there were 20,000 emergency room visits in 2011 and 18 reported deaths in 2012 directly resulting from energy drinks. May not be able to control it as a coach, but as a parent, don't buy this stuff for your kids. It's, it's, it can be deadly. Pre-workouts, I love asking the kids, you know, how many of you are doing pre-workouts? Now I'll ask them, how many of them have ever heard of Jack 3D? This was the most popular product sold at GNC for quite a period of time. The US Army had five soldiers year before last drop dead from using this stuff from heart problems. I'm getting ready to show you a short video with, uh, 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 with a young man that did that. But this is just heavy duty, super duper, souped up stimulants. Amphet uh, you know, there's, there's several products. The product Craze down on the bottom right hand side. Anybody seen or heard of that one? Methamphetamine, same compounds that make up methamphetamines. Now we go, we have horror stories in our schools. If we find anybody's got a local meth lab going on and our kids are getting a hold of it, while we've got others that are going right into the health food store and buying products that are made up of exactly the same compounds. So let's look at uh, the story of one young man uh, that took Jack 3D. Let me just tell you the story. There's a young man from California. Um, <coughs> had just gotten into the Army, was at basic training, and was doing a basic three-mile run. Nothing, nothing too heavy duty. He dropped dead, uh, he, he collapsed while he was running, and they uh, called his mom, told her that they had taken him to the hospital and all, and uh, before it was over with, um, they had given him ice baths to try to get his body temperature down. After five ice baths, they couldn't get his core body temperature down below 105 degrees. He basically cooked. 
He, he burned up, there were, and as I said, I've already said that one, there were five soldiers year before last that died from using this stuff. There's a substance in there called DMAA, just basically a heavy duty stimulant that these young knuckleheads are taking before going into the weight room. I mean, if you just think about it, it's crazy. They feel their body get warm, they can describe, you know, their heart beginning to a beat like that, and it can be deadly. So, <coughs> are you taking dirty supplements or are your kids taking dirty supplements? I'm getting ready to give you, if you've got, if you've got the ability to take notes, please take notes on this one slide. I'm gonna give you two tools to use to know whether your supplements are safe or not. It's the only two legitimate that we know of. And it's free, it doesn't cost anything. First one on the left is NSF. If you haven't heard that name, memorize it. NSF is an independent testing laboratory that tests supplements <coughs> to verify that what's on the label of the container is what's in the container. And oh, by the way, the reverse, that there's not stuff in the container that's not listed on the label. And companies like EAS, for example, big companies, you know, pay to have their products tested so that they can get the good housekeeping seal of approval. In Major League Baseball and in the NFL, an athlete is not allowed to bring product into the locker room if it does not have the NSF label on it. Two things, you can go to nsfsport.com, and again, my recommendation would be my kids would not be allowed to purchase products that are not on that nsfsport.com website. If it's good enough for a player in Major League Baseball or in the NFL, it's good enough for my kids. And if you go to that website, the list, it's not a short list, there's a long list of products, but that ought to be the guidelines when they go into, uh, into the store. Second one is Aegis Shield, which is a, a smartphone app that they can go take into the health food store with them and you can read the barcode and it's gonna give you a red, green, or yellow label to tell you first indication based on the label whether or not they ought to be concerned about that product. Uh, and they are, uh, Aegis is beginning to develop a list like NSF. I've got some uh, foam wipes here if you're interested after that's got all Aegis information on it. So let's get to the subject that that is my favorite because this is what happened to Taylor, it was anabolic steroids. What are anabolic steroids? No science lesson here, quite straightforward. Ster anabolic steroids are artificial testosterone. The male hormone that starts our puberty cycle, finishes the puberty cycle, turns our young boys from boys into men. There are over 120 different types of pharmaceutical grade steroids. And when we think pharmaceutical, think of the little guys and gals in their white lab coats developing this stuff and putting it into vials or into pill packages to be delivered via prescription out to you or me in the general marketplace. Three ways of taking them. They can be uh, orally taken as a pill, most dangerous way to take these drugs. The liver can't process it. Can be rubbed on the skin or you put a patch on your skin. I think some of you will remember Barry Bonds, who told us all that that was flaxseed oil he thought he was rubbing on his skin. Right, Barry. Every high school baseball player in America knows what it is you were rubbing on your skin. Or finally, most of our kids, including Taylor, are using needles and syringes to inject the real stuff. Now, they think they're getting the pharmaceutical-grade stuff I described to you. That is not what is being sold on the streets in the United States. According to the DEA, virtually 100%, we can never say 100% of this crap is coming in from China, some of it from India and Malaysia, let's just say Southeast Asia, comes into this country in a cardboard box as a powder. I've seen the boxes in the evidence rooms. Well, any fool knows that you can't inject powder, right? So you have to mix it with something so that it can be put into a vial and injected. Well, what our local meatheads, as I affectionately call them, are doing are taking and mixing this stuff with things like sesame seed oil, baby oil, or they can explain to you the scientific reasons that they've selected sesame seed oil to be able to use this stuff. Uh, I was doing this program up in Canada a couple years ago, and a head football coach there from the University of Waterloo stepped for he says, Mr. Hooten, I'm embarrassed to tell you, when I was playing college ball, 
my dealer was mixing this stuff with armor on. And I'll intentionally pause on that one to let you let it sink in. My son was doing this program in Oklahoma. You never know who's in the audience. We do kids and parents in a session, and there was a dad that stepped forward after, who was a DEA agent. He explained to Donald, he said, uh, we just took down our big website lab here in, uh, in Oklahoma. He says our local dealer was uh, mixing this stuff with horse urine. And Don goes, horse urine? He says, oh yeah, you ever felt the stuff, how oily it is? Don says, no, I never felt horse urine before. Maybe some of you farm boys have, but uh, as I try to tell the kids, if I can't convince you to stay away from steroids, can you just begin to understand what else is in that vial besides steroids? The answer is you have no idea what else is in this stuff. Also, for <coughs> you that are considering uh, or relying on testing programs to, to see whether or not your athletes are <coughs> using anabolic steroids, let me assure you, this stuff was designed before it hit the country not to be detected on an anabolic steroids test. The odds of catching one of these kids using this stuff is somewhere between slim and none. So you come back with a whole clean slate of kids that tested clean, and well, I, we don't have a steroid problem here. Well, you may not have a steroid problem there, but we can't rely on testing in order to be, and I, we've learned the hard way. I can tell, we could do a whole hour lecture on testing, strengths and weaknesses. Quick trip to China, I hope you can see this. This is a picture that NSF took of a lab over there in China that was making raw steroid powders as well as providing raw materials for some of the supplements being sold here in the US. If you look in the top left-hand corner, you can see one of the workers has left his motorcycle there in the laboratory uh, where, they, where they were putting this stuff together. Uh, this is, you know, thank goodness they filter this stuff. This is some of the raw materials that came out of the uh, product after it had been cooked. It's like one of my guys that works for me says, you can almost build a little sewing kit out of that. The stuff that was filtered before it was uh, finally cooked in the powder. <coughs> real, real beautiful stuff. Stuff comes here in the U.S., it's taken into somebody's basement or garage where it's uh, put, into, uh, put into vials or put into pills uh, for sale out. Uh, again, not what we picture as a clean room with uh, white lab coats behind a, a clean wall where this stuff is being put together. Contamination. A number of these bodybuilders, you can still find this on the uh, bodybuilding websites, knew that this stuff was originating in China, so they had some of their vials from around the country tested to see whether or not there were heavy metals uh, in, the, uh, in these vials, because remember the controversy several years ago, they stopped the shipment of toys coming into the U.S. because the paint was contaminated with lead, we were concerned our children or our grandchildren uh, would be uh, poisoned. Well, they had uh, some of this stuff tested, and lo and behold, fully 21% were contaminated with lead, mercury, zinc, tin, or arsenic. And I challenged the kids, go talk to your science teacher and get them to explain to you what injecting this into your body will do to your brain. Take a quick trip back to China. On the other side of the wall where the powder was being, uh, uh, the raw materials were coming in, this is where the stuff was being cooked. And I'll just leave it with your own two eyes to figure out where the heavy metals just might be coming from. This is, this is where this garbage is made. So who's using it? And listen up, because everybody's using it, and it's not because coaches told them to use. There's a whole social movement going on with these kids, and it's going on, I promise you, in most, if not all, of your schools. Um, and it may or may not have anything to do with athletics. As we might suspect, this stuff started with the athletes, it started with the boys, who were looking to get bigger and faster and stronger. But what uh, the social component of this is, is the, the, boy, the, the, the boys figured, the other boys in school figured out, if that's what it's gonna take to get the attention of the pretty girls, well, guess what I'm gonna do? We call them even mirror athletes. They want to look like the athletes, but they have no intention of coming out and trying out on the athletic field. This begins to be a, it's, it, the, the, there's a term for it called bigorexia. It's the whole, you know, it's a, it's a body image problem that's akin on the female side to the anorexia and bulimia. It's an obsessive desire to get bigger. 
But the fastest growing <coughs> user group of these drugs are our little girls. Uh, again, not necessarily athletes who are injecting these drugs to get the six-pack look in the abs. Drugs like Winstrol, uh, which is a veterinary drug uh, that's used by bodybuilders to cut their muscle uh, before competition. Just to back this up with some statistics, Dr. Tom Hildebrand uh, out of Mount Sinai Hospital in New York asked some bodybuilders, uh, long-term sterile users, why did you start to begin with? Notice that the number one reasons are to look better and to feel better about myself. Number three on the list is athletic performance, which is to say above and beyond what we're encouraging or not encouraging our kids to do, there are many pressures going on around them to participate in this activity. Well, how many kids is that? Most recent study is from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. It was released last year. 7% of all high school students, that's boys, girls, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, 7% of the total population admit using anabolic steroids. Real quick back, I'm from Dallas. Typical high school is 2,000 kids. That's 140 kids walking those high hallways actively using these drugs, yet if we talk to the school administrators, the ADs, the teachers, not a problem in my school, it's not going on. Well, if you don't really honestly don't believe it's going on in your program, please approach me afterwards because we want to know what you're doing in your school that has kept it from coming to your school because it's going on everywhere. Human growth hormone, uh, 11% of high school students admit to using this. I just, it's hard to believe. Uh, median age for starting is 15 years old. So we need to be catching these kids uh, way before college. Some groups, gay and bisexual boys, the number is 21%. If we look at the boys that view themselves as underweight and are trying to gain weight, it's 12.6%. The boys that view themselves as overweight that are trying to get in shape, it's 11.9%. It's crazy. <clears throat> Those numbers are hard to believe, but apply them, do a little math, and apply them to the population in your school, and it'll be in this ballpark somewhere. Even if you're from some rural community, I'm always told, oh, we don't have much of a competitive environment here in our state or in our school district, so my kids wouldn't be using this stuff. <clears throat> Think beyond football. It's going on whether or not it's going on for athletic purposes or not. Well, why do kids feel the need to do this? I'm going to share with you some factors that are beyond athletics here for a minute. Role models, media and advertising, and body image. Role models. Everybody's got role models, including <coughs> most of us in here, in music, in sports, in whatever venue we, we look at. Uh, in sports, there is no sport including badminton, by the way. I need to add that picture. The world champion in badminton uh, was, was using anabolic steroids. That's beyond comprehension, but it's the absolute truth. The point is, is the kids look to their role models, and it's hard to convince them that that wasn't the ticket to Lance Armstrong's success, or I got to work with Alex Rodriguez two or three years. Uh, you know, it's hard to convince kids that that isn't the panacea that took these guys and gals to the very top. So we're fighting that to begin with. Second, with our media and advertising, are we sending messages to kids that these are dangerous drugs or that they're good drugs? I mean, what could be wrong with a performance enhancing drug, right? Well, here are companies, and we could fill up two or three slides with these, that are comfortable enough with anabolic steroids that they're comparing the strength of their product. It's like you know, it's like putting your car engine on, uh, on steroids. Just think how often that terminology is used. Well, I like to use this as an example of the uh, company here that's advertising their tennis shoe on steroids. And I asked the kids to imagine Nike introducing a new uh, Michael Jordan tennis shoe. And the advertisement goes, it's like putting your feet on crack cocaine. And they all laugh. I said, well, what's the joke, guys? These are drugs, illegal drugs, just like the crack cocaine. The difference is our society has become comfortable enough with this that businesses are sending messages to kids. You know, just look at the you know, comedies on the TV show. How often do you hear something about it's like putting something on steroids? We're not sending clear messages to our kids that these are illegal drugs. 
And finally, one I like to have a little fun with is a body image. I don't know whether any of you in here are old enough to remember when the Batman and Superman looked like this, right? Got one or two in here that ain't that old. Batman and Superman have changed in the last few years, right? That's a milk commercial up in the top left. As we look at these today's models of <clears throat> superhero role, role models, these are bodies that are not achievable can't go into the gym and work out and eat all the healthy meat and potatoes you want and get a body like that. This is a result of illegal drug use. But we got, you know, these are the comic books we're giving our kids, or in some cases, or in our, our grandkids when they're five or six years old as superheroes. And then we got, you know, the kids sitting down when they're 16 for Thanksgiving dinner and we can't figure, you know, where in the hell did you get it in your mind you need to be this big? For the ladies, here was Rachel McClish, the very first Ms. Olympia back in 1980. Here are the equivalent Ms. Olympias in, uh, in today's body images that are appearing in the fitness magazines. Again, as you look at some of these bodies, I can't say for sure with the ladies that these were achieved with performance enhancing drugs, but there's a whole lot of them out there that are achieving them that way. And finally, my favorite is G.I. Joe. Remember that one? This is what G.I. Joe, this was just the year 2000. That's just 15 years ago. This is what he looks like today. His biceps have gone from 12 to 27. His chest has gone from 44 to 55. And we're trying to figure out where in the hell the kids got it in their minds that they need this kind of, uh, this kind of growth. And this isn't all of the problem, but it's just an example of the problem in the environment these kids have grown up in. Now, everything up to now has been uh, some derivative of the illegal steroids that are being sold on the street. What I want to shift to now is even if the drugs were coming from Merck Labs and some doctor on the team is prescribing this stuff, and we don't have any of the contamination issues that I've discussed, discussed why not use anabolic steroids? Oh, yeah, I lost the slide here. Let's just say first. They're cheating in every sport. They're against the rules, period, full stop, end, end of story. I missed two slides here. I know what's coming up, just thinking. Uh, the second is they're illegal. And when we talk to the kids, most of them don't realize that these are illegal drugs. And if they get caught with them, they can get sent to jail. Now, there aren't many cops that are enforcing that one. And there's a whole story that goes along with the usage that's going on among our law enforcement and fire departments. But taking that aside, these are illegal and our kids can wind up going to jail. And finally, these are dangerous drugs. Now the slide, next slide that I'm missing, I'll put it in for the next program, I can't believe it got deleted here, is a uh, thought question. You know, if, if you're injecting yourself with a muscle building substance and it's circulating through your body, is there any reason to believe that the only muscles that are getting bigger are the ones that you can see on the outside of your body? And the answer is, of course not. Every muscle is impacted. The most important muscle is the heart. It gets larger, just like the, uh, the, the muscles that you can see on the outside of the body. I've got a picture from National Geographic. It shows the, the size of a normal adult male heart and then the size of a steroid user, which is about three or four times the size of a normal adult male heart. The, the, the heart muscle gets weaker, not stronger. I'm getting ready to show you a picture of that, but the high pressure, blood pressure goes up. Good cholesterol uh, uh, goes down, bad cholesterol goes up, and the user is at serious risk of heart attack and stroke. Think about the next time we do have a heart problem on the athletic field with a kid at 19 years old or 17 or 16 that we can't figure out. I mean, there are, there are things going on with some of these kids that are beyond heat exhaustion that can be causing their hearts to react this way. And that's one of the things we're trying to raise the conscious of. Here's a, a, an internal picture of an enlarged heart as a result of steroid use. It's a normal heart on the left side. And look at the inside of the heart as it not only got larger, but the muscles on the inside as it grew, the internal vessels that are carrying the blood got smaller. 
Uh, so you've got Im impaired blood flow that, uh, that, that's going through the heart. I mean, between this one and the one I, uh, that got dropped out of my slide deck, it's a very powerful visual for your kids about what in the heck is happening to them when they make a decision to, to use these drugs. Uh, acne, 43%, uh, according to the American Medical Association, of the kids that, you know, that, that use this stuff wind up with acne, primarily on the back, sometimes under the eyes, and on the chest. It's your kid that's walking around the locker room or in the showers, it's always making an effort to put, put a towel around their shoulders because they don't want anybody seeing uh, the acne that, that they're developing. Oh, here we've got a couple of good ones coming up. Uh, the testicles get smaller. I love seeing the boys kind of squirming in their seats as we uh, show them the pictures that I'm getting ready to show you here in a moment about what happens to the testicles. The testicles no longer need to produce testosterone because there's plenty of testosterone in the body in the form of uh, anabolic steroids. Uh, because you have excess testosterone in your body, the male body counters by producing estrogen. And when the male body produces estrogen, <coughs> estrogen, the boy's breasts grow just like the little girl's breasts grow. And then there's all kinds of other things, you know, prostate damage, trying to get you know, explain to your kids what it's like uh, having a prostate exam uh, when you get to 40 years old and ask them if they want to start that routine when they're in their 20s because they made a decision to use anabolic steroid. Here's that picture I promised you about the uh, before and after on the testicles. And it's, uh, you know, we don't usually use this with the kids, especially in a mixed audience, but it's a pretty visual example of what's happening to these kids. Uh, and it, these don't function like they're supposed to. Here's one example I tell coaches. If you've got a 17-year-old <coughs> running around the school asking his buddies where he can get a prescription of Viagra, I don't know about you, but when I was 17 years old, the last performance enhancing drug I needed was Viagra. And if we've got kids looking for Viagra when they're 16 or 17 years old, it's not necessarily the case, but that's one indication that they just might be uh, having their sexual performance enhancement decreased because they've been using drugs like anabolic steroid. Now here's one I haven't played for an audience yet. This is brand new to us. This is a bodybuilder, and he's got a case you can see of gynecomastia. Let's see what that, oh, my video didn't play again. Golly. I'm not sure why, but here we go, here we go. Now wa watch carefully. He's proud of this. Keep your eyes open here. It gets pretty gross here in a minute. It's real, guys. He's lactating. Direct result. Yeah, put your heads down. I have a tough time with that, but I'll move on. <laughs> this is a re I mean, it's, it's, it's gross, but it's very, very real, and I promise you, your kids have no idea that that's what they're getting themselves into. Uh, for the ladies, this is male hormones they're taking. It's basically turning them from ladies into men. They begin to develop male pattern baldness. Uh, the, uh, their breasts get smaller. They wind up with a deeper voice, as well as many of the other problems that we've described. Then there's a whole lot of female problems they have here that I don't take the time to go through in any of those. And then there's a whole list of other stuff that the anabolic steroids are doing to their body. Let's just summarize the physical section by saying that there's virtually no organ in the body that's not negatively impacted to the point that overall life expectancy is shortened when uh, uh, anyone makes the decision to use these drugs. Psychologically, this is how we got introduced to anabolic steroids, uh, and it's especially dangerous when these young boys are coming off the steroids. Their bodies have uh, been uh, relying on the steroids to fulfill the uh, need for uh, testosterone. The body has stopped producing testosterone, and for a period of days, weeks, or months, their bodies will not produce testosterone, and severe depression sets in. Severe enough to result in suicide, which is what happened to Taylor. Uh, latest stats out of Harvard, 29% of the kids coming off of steroids are going to experience severe 
major depressive episodes, why anyone would voluntarily open themselves up to that. If you've ever been around people with depression, it's beyond me. And of course, we're all familiar with roid rage. We joke about it. It is very real. We saw it with our own eyes. So what do we do about the problem? We talk about it. And our objective is to equip you and others to get these kids not to use anabolic steroids, even if they weren't against the rules. They shouldn't be using this stuff. Rules are a part of it. But sadly, 85% of our kids report they've never had any adult, no coach, teacher, or parent talk with them about this problem. And we're trying to change that. Um, I personally believe that between your profession and the athletic trainers, you're the most powerful group and influence on these kids' lives. And ignoring the problem's not the answer. You know, don't, you can't be satisfied just because you haven't encouraged the kids to do it. They got plenty of pressure on them to do it anyway. We need to be talking to these kids about why they shouldn't be doing it. Now you say, well, Mr. Hooten, I don't know anything about steroids. I can't talk. Can you just tell these kids it's wrong, it's cheating, and if I catch one of you little knuckleheads doing this, you're off the team. Use that, these guys, most of them would walk through or try to walk through a brick wall if you ask them to do it. Use your leadership influence to help keep them away from these drugs. And, and, and I'll get to that one. Don't be telling these kids they need to get bigger unless you're taking the time to show them how to get bigger with a proper diet and exercise program. As we learn, and it's not the coach's fault, that's the way it did it when I was a kid. You know, you need to get bigger. You're too skinny. Put some more meat on those bones. Well, that's fine. How do you do that, coach? You know, be cognizant of that at the time. We have an education program. We have to call it Hoops Chalk Talk, but we travel the country. Uh, we, we do many of our programs with the professional athletes. Uh, University Group is our biggest one. We do a number of the big tier one as well as all the way down to Division Three schools and some of them that aren't even big enough for Division Three, And we'd love to come to your school or to your USA conference meetings or to an athletic director's meeting or a coach's meeting in your state or in your city to come deliver a similar program to what we've talked about today. To promote the positive side of the message, which is you know, playing clean and taking pride and eating right and not using, you know, succeeding on the athletic field or in life with performance enhancing drugs. We've created something we call the all me league and it's about being all me. When I step on the field, it's all me. There's no performance enhancing drugs involved. And I'm proud to tell you now that in Major League Baseball, we have a star athletes from all 30 Major League Baseball teams that are on our team and uh, We'll be headed down to spring training here in two weeks to meet with these guys and do an on-field ceremonies. And we are in active discussions with several people within the, within the NFL. I hope that within the next year we can get a roster of NFL players that will uh, stand with you guys and stand up as role models just simply delivering the positive message. I made it to the very top of sport and I didn't need to rely on you know, tainted dietary supplements or performance enhancing drugs to get there. So when you get home, please visit our website. You can come to taylorhooten.org website or to the All Me League website, which is brand new. There's a place for, for you or your kids to pledge, to sign a pledge that you're going to live and compete PED free. All of you should sign up for that and should encourage your athletes to do the same thing. It's really easy. It takes all of about a minute but it's a statement that goes on your Facebook page and the kids' Facebook page said, I just joined the, uh, the All Me League and I pledge to compete and live PED free. Please take some time and do that and encourage your kids to. And in closing, you know, like every other organization, we've got our Facebook <coughs> page, our Twitter feed, our Instagram, and would encourage you to follow us. It's, uh, probably more information than you ever wanted on a regular basis about what's going on in this world, but it's really scary. And uh, I hope you learned something today. And I'll thank USA Football for having us here today. What a great event. And uh, hope to see all of you gentlemen down the road. Anybody?